I'm super excited to introduce you to one of my friends, uh, a colleague, and I think one of the people who's made some of the greatest impact in the HIV AIDS movement. Uh, we're here to talk about World AIDS Day and the impact of AIDS in Appalachia. I'd like to introduce to you Miguel Gomez of HIV.gov. Miguel, will you tell everybody your title and how long you've been at HIV.gov? Absolutely, Tony, and hello. It's so good to see you. Um, Tony, I have been with HIV.gov over 17 years. No way. And 31 years in federal service. So um, I've seen the importance of World AIDS Day many times. And for anyone who doesn't know, World AIDS Day is on December 1st. Perfect. So December 1st, World AIDS Day. You know, you and I met, I think, I remember one of our first events. Actually, I have a photo of us back in 1984 when we were doing a Halloween event uh, to support a couple of HIV AIDS groups in D.C. Now, you've been doing HIV.gov, uh, you say, for 17 years. Can you tell us what HIV.gov is and what it does? Sure, absolutely. HIV.gov provides information to the general public and the HIV community on federal resources, programs, and policies. But one of the things we do that is so important, we provide information on basic HIV um, facts, care and treatment, prevention. What we learned is that we can talk about policy, but across America, people still need to know the basic facts about HIV. Perfect. Thanks so much. You know, when we uh, started to transition our work into Appalachia, for example, one of the things we did is that we came to you and we started to talk about the National AIDS Strategy. You were very instrumental in getting us some access to uh, Harold Phillips and the office there to be able to make sure that the Appalachia region was included in the new National AIDS Strategy. Can you talk to us a bit about where the National AIDS Strategy is right now or what your office is doing to promote that? Absolutely, and, um, and I love the fact that you asked to promote it. One of the things that's so important to us about the National HIV Strategy, which was released on World AIDS Day last year wow, okay. by President Biden, was really a roadmap to lead us towards managing ending HIV um, in the United States, making sure that there's adequate care and treatment for those still living with HIV, but really make sure that we prevent new infections. And you, I know you know this, but just recently, we released a federal implementation plan for the strategy to really make sure we look at how we're going to achieve those goals. Well, you know, one of the things we're seeing is that the ending the epidemic strategy is in its end of its first phase and is moving into phase two. You know, and a lot of the 423 counties of the Appalachia region are rural communities. Can you talk to me a bit about what's going on in your office for rural communities and in Appalachia? And since we're talking about World Aid Day, let's put this in context of World Aid Day. And I don't mind using this terminology. It's a gift what you're able to do in your state, in those counties. Because if we pause for a second and look at why do we address World AIDS Day? It is a time in the United States and across the world in which not just the HIV community or the public health community thinks about HIV AIDS, but we collectively pause to say, listen, this is an issue in my community and there's something that we need to do. And so, Tony, one of the things that I love about the work that you're doing is that you're explaining the impact of HIV and ways in which communities can respond. And, and how do I tie that back to the National HIV Strategy? It's all about roadmaps and making a difference in community and recognizing where HIV is being most impacted. And I would actually sort of turn the question back to you. As you look to this World AIDS Day, what are some of the things that you might be able to do to use that moment in time where we pause to educate communities uh, across where you serve? You know, thank you for that. Because, you know, one of the things we're looking at right now is the We Are Appalachia initiative. So we're looking at the 423 counties of Appalachia and saying we need to really address what I think is a syndemic or a growing syndemic in that region. And the, what I like to do is say that there's a train and the train, the engine of that train was originally injection drug use, now it's poly drug use. The 
the next car is hepatitis C. Many people don't know, Kentucky and West Virginia have vacillated between number one and two and hep C race. We got hepatitis B, hepatitis A, and we have educational attainment challenges, workforce development challenges, the caboose of that car being HIV. And as those of us in public health know that these things usually work in five year cycles. And if you think about that train, if you visualize that train, add on top of that coal and other environmental challenges in the region. What we really need to figure out how we're going to do is educate people, mobilize new communities like MAT providers uh, to get them engaged in our fight against HIV because HIV is not over. We're also doing a lot of work with CDC and CDC Foundation to do things like home test kits. We think that, you know, particularly folks in rural communities don't necessarily have the access that we want and we still have to figure out new ways to gain access for those communities. So we want to thank you at HIV HIV.gov for being able to provide us many of the tools that many of the smaller providers don't necessarily have the resources to develop on their own. And your shop's doing some really amazing stuff. And I just want to say thank you personally and thank you to the HIV.gov team on this World AIDS Day. Well, thank you. And as we move towards the December 1st, we also thank you for investing across your the multiple communities and drilling within the sub-communities within those communities. And this World AIDS Day, as we focus Focus on a holistic approach, the issue, how do we address HIV in an equitable manner? I know you're going to be successful and look forward to continuing to work with you. Thanks for this time this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as I tell everybody, the government is made up of people, not just letters. Thanks, Miguel. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Be well.